Good morning. This is Rich Nelson with Alan Dale here with our morning update here for Tuesday, June 14th of 2016. Steve Georgie is out here for the day. Now, in terms of outside markets, we have some dollar, uh, U.S. dollar index trading up 32 points right now. Really not too much of any major driving uh, influence right now. We do, of course, have the May retail sales data. That was out this morning, suggesting a 0.5% increase in uh, retail prices here. That was considered maybe a little positive for economic activity here. Uh, also keep in mind the Federal Open Market Committee, the policy-making arm of the Federal Reserve. They're set to meet today as well as tomorrow. And uh, as a reminder, the trade is expecting no change in interest rate policy at this time. In terms of uh, other markets here on the outside issue here, uh, looks like crude oil down about 53 points here. Uh, last trade is about 48.36 in terms of pricing. That peak just three days ago was 51.67. So this minor pullback we're having right now in energy prices, we're now reaching some areas which could act as some support. Let's see exactly what actually happens, and maybe it could have some influence for us on the grain side of things. In terms of the grains, as you would expect here, based on the crop progress report from yesterday afternoon, current uh, mindset is maybe it's for a little bit lower trade here in the morning hours. Uh, corn seed down maybe two to four cents. Soybeans down about four to six. Looks like wheat down maybe one to three cents here off the open here. In terms of weather, looks like we're still looking at almost the same forecast as, uh, as yesterday. Maybe you can argue a few areas have been dried out a little bit here, but as a whole, most of the corn belt will see anywhere from one half inch to one and a half inches uh, at some point this week here between now and Thursday or so. Uh, as a reminder here for next week's trade or next week's weather, they're still seen as mainly warm and dry at this point. So even though we might have a slight slump in grain prices, we do have this next round of dryness waiting for us next week. In terms of news on the crop progress report, well, as far as these ratings for corn and soybeans, they did come in better than expected. As far as corn, uh, they left those ratings unchanged at 75% good to excellent. That's actually a very high rating for this time of year. In terms of uh, in terms of the expectation, they're only looking at 74. Looking at the board above me here, I see that we've got written down there soybean good to excellent ratings up 2%, uh, now at 74% good to excellent. Uh, that was actually a surprise here. The trade was expecting uh, no change versus last week's 72. Over on spring wheat, those were left unchanged at 79% good to excellent. Winter wheat was the only one you could call, maybe bullish if you recall it that. Uh, that was down 1% at 61%. Good to excellent here. So a slightly negative tone here as we're still looking at maybe some moderate rains here next few days, as well as a slightly bearish crop progress report. Now, in terms of uh, other news, uh, overnight we did see Japan bought about 60,000 tons of U.S. old crop corn and about 70, 76,000 tons of new crop corn. Also, Unknown bought 110,000 tons of new crop soybeans. There were no old crop soybeans purchased last night. Uh, in terms of other news, looks like China did su successfully auction about 1.5 million tons out of their 2.1 that they were offering to various uh, various grain buyers. Uh, that was considered a good successful auction here. Uh, they also uh, left. Yeah, actually, they also moved out some uh, imported corn as well, and uh, also 27,000 tons of government-owned wheat. So as far as those goes, really no major influence in, in terms of today's action here uh, beyond the crop progress report. Keep in mind here for Wednesday, we have the monthly NOPA crush. We will consider this actually moderately important here because USDA has been raising their crush estimates for the past two months, despite the fact that we don't have any major jump yet in crush. Uh, the incentive certainly last month was there with a major uh, major crush margin, but the question right now is whether that actually did translate into actual large numbers. Over on Thursday, we've got the NOAA update as far as long-term weather models. Keep in mind, this is the exact same report back in 2012, which started that 2012 rally. Let's see if, you, if uh, the government's going to move maybe closer towards the private guys or whether they'll still remain generally calling for a good growing season. In terms of uh, livestock here, looks like on the live cattle end, you would expect maybe about a dollar lower open here today. This, of course, comes after yesterday's limit down losses for both live cattle and feeder cattle. Uh, we're all going to expect some cash cattle trade to see some uh, sharp losses this week, maybe about 2 to $3. The question exactly uh, is exactly how much. In terms of uh, other issues here, looks like choice beef was down $0.11 cents yesterday. Looks like down to 231 for select. Over on hogs, we'd expect more of a mixed trade here today. Uh, we're going to have a, a quiet expiration of the June uh, contract. Shouldn't uh, cause any, any major problems at this point. 
Uh, yesterday's cash hog influence was up 106 in the Iowa Southern Minnesota direct trade. Looks like uh, cash pork was up 97. At this point in time, we still have maybe about a week, week and a half left of the seasonal rally before we could expect some minor influence as far as some bearish offsetting influence to maybe cap this rally on the cash hog and things here. So as far as grains, looks like we lower across the board here. Very moderate volume expected here today. In terms of livestock, sharply lower on cattle to start out. And as far as hogs, maybe some mixed trade. If you have any questions about how to uh, trade today, what's going on as far as news or activities, feel free to give, Al uh, to give Allendale a call here, 1-800-262-7538.